coach for East Carolina Pirate Baseball. Can you compare this year's team to last year's team? You really just evaluate this team and, and, and do we have what we what we need to play our style, right? Play, play our style and, and play how, how we want to play because every team is different. And when you get caught up kind of comparing and contrasting, I think it you know puts you in a mindset that's not really all that beneficial for this year's team and, and, and where we're going. Tune in Mondays at noon for the Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, right here on Pirate Radio. Hey, Pirate Nation, Lindsey Gray here with Carolina Caliber. In 1960, my granddaddy started his firearm business right here in Eastern NC. Still family-owned and operated, we have the area's largest selection for outdoor shooting sports and accessories and are one of the nation's top firearm dealers. At Carolina Caliber, we have everything you need from hunting, home defense, and personal protection, including a wide variety for ladies and youth. We buy, sell, and trade. It's a time-honored tradition. Visit us at Carolina Caliber on Fire Tower Road in Winterville. At Jersey Mike's, we take great satisfaction in getting that perfect meat slice. Yes. <clears throat> but we don't do it for fun. We do it for fresh. Because slice to order makes a sub above. Alone, chicken, onions, peppers, and cheese have potential. Together, they have a purpose, a destiny, and a name. Jersey Mike's number 16 Chicken Philly. Because grilled to order makes a sub above. North Carolina State Parks is proud to announce that they have partnered with the Hometown Strong Program. Our visitor centers are now equipped with public Wi-Fi to help kids with school. Remote learning has become a critical public health measure in maintaining social distance and continuing to educate our young people. Take advantage of Wi-Fi and a hike at Goose Creek State Park or a day trip to the beach and access remote learning at Fort Macon State Park. For more information, visit hometownstrong.nc.gov. Hi, this is Jeff Charles, and welcome inside the booth. The dog days of February are here for college basketball teams, including the Pirates. I'll have some thoughts next. I'm Clip Brock. I'm Chandler Honeycutt. I'm Shirley Rhodes. Join us every weekday from 3 to 6 for Pirate Radio Live. We'll keep you up to date on everything going on with ECU Athletics and make you a winner each and every day when we open up the Pirate Radio booty bag. You can hear the show streaming online, on radio, and on social. Catch us weekdays on Pirate Radio Live from 3 to 6 right here on Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Joe Dooley's Pirates had a tough January going 2-6 and six with two cancellations. The AAC schedule maker didn't do the Pirates any favors with two games against Memphis, two games against Cincinnati, and a game at Houston ranked number 10 in the nation at the time. February is usually make or break time. Guys are tired from the wear and tear of the games, practices, and travel, not to mention going to school. The tough guys look to find a way to persevere and even thrive while others fall by the wayside. If teams can get through February in one piece. Usually the energy picks up going into the first week of March and into conference tournament play. That is the challenge for ECU this month. Stay in the course, keep chopping wood. There are eight games this month, four at home and four on the road. A good month, and the Pirates can have a rare winning season. A bad month, and it's just more of the same. Stay tuned. Come on back next time, and we'll visit Inside the Booth. Before anyone walks into your business, the outside is what they see. Make sure your first impression is a good impression with the right curb appeal. Hi, this is Daniel Andrews from Dan Andrews Lawn Service. We specialize in making your business look great. Let us handle all your professional landscaping needs. We do it all so you don't ever have to worry. Residential services are also available. Call us today at 717-8006 and we'll come out and give you a free quote. Taking care of your landscaping needs is all we do and we've been doing it for over 20 years. You can trust our reliable team at Dan Andrews Lawn Service covering all of Eastern North Carolina. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. This is Eastern North Carolina's longest sports radio show. The Brian Bailey Show is on the air. 
The Brian Bailey Show is powered by Greenville Utilities and also brought to you by Angus Grill, Bostick Sug Furniture, Bojangles, East Coast Grady, Papa John's, The Gavigan Agency, Pepsi, Seared Chop House, Taft Taft and Hagler, Tiebreakers, and Greenville Auto World. And now, here's Brian Bailey. Okay, happy Monday, everybody. Welcome into our show as we talk Pirate Baseball today. Austin Knight, pitching coach at East Carolina, is live in the studio with us as we dissect a disappointing weekend for East Carolina as the Pirates drop all three games to a very good Bryant University uh, club. The Bryant Bulldogs come to town and take three from East Carolina. Austin is alongside. We'll take a commercial break right now, and we'll come back, and we'll begin to look at the three games coming up after this. Papa John's just took their fresh, never-frozen dough and hand-stretched it New York style. So you can fold it or not. I ain't gonna lie, though. I fold it. Get a New York style pizza from Papa John's. Hey, Pirate fans. The new Papa John's New York style pizza is an MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at PapaJohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, the official pizza of the ECU Pirates. There's no better time to drive away with a quality pre-owned car, truck, or SUV from Greenville Auto World. Greenville Auto World is your authorized rough country dealer. We specialize in lift and leveling kits along with custom wheel packages. Whether you're looking for ground clearance or enhancing the appearance of your vehicle, trust our team for your off-road experience. Greenville Auto World, 3840 South Charles Boulevard across from Hardy's at Bell's Fork or online at greenvilleautoworld.net. It's bow time. We think a chicken sandwich this good should speak for itself. Mm Mm-hmm. But when you're talking juicy, hand-breaded, and boldly seasoned chicken breasts, piled up with thick-cut pickles and creamy mayo all on a buttery toasted bun, well, we are happy to say it again and again and again. Bo's Chicken Sandwich, only at Bojangles. It's bow time. In studio with Dr. Shondell Jones from Kinetic Physical Therapy and Wellness. What's new, Dr. Jones? Yes, we just added 6,000 more square feet of gym space where we're now able to offer our athletic movement programs. They're age-specific programs that help you develop speed, power, agility, and strength to give you that athletic edge. So come by and see us at Kinetic Physical Therapy and Wellness on Arlington Boulevard or check us out online at kptonline.com. That's kptonline.com. Come pop a top at Jarvis Street Bottle Shop. Jarvis Street Bottle Shop is a specialty shop selling craft, domestic, and import brews, along with wine and growlers. Hosting a tailgate? Stop by the shop and grab a keg for your party or event. The bottle shop offers monthly beer and wine tastings, featuring rotating NC craft breweries, along with live music and discounts. Stop by the shop Tuesday through Sunday, or check them out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. At Union Bank, we understand you live life on the go. That's why our banking options are designed to serve you, wherever you are. If you want to meet us in person at one of our local branches, complete banking tasks on the go from the mobile app, or bank from your office with convenient remote deposit and cash management services, we're everywhere you need us to be. Whether you're simply managing a busy schedule or an entire business, we're right there with you with personalized service and helpful tools. Call or visit us online at unionbanknc.com. Union Bank is a member of FDIC and the Equal Housing Lender. This is ECU Assistant Football Coach Roy Tesh, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, providing reliable utility solutions to the Greenville region since 1905. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back to our show on this Monday. East Carolina drops all three games to Brian over the weekend. Austin Knight, pitching coach at East Carolina, nice enough to join us as we go through the games and talk about pitching for East Carolina. Pirates uh, were ranked 25th today by D1 Baseball, so Pirates stay in the national rankings, although I know Cliff Godwin doesn't care about that at all. He just wants to see this team uh, get itself right, and I think they will. Uh, let's talk about, first of all, before we go back in time, let's go forward. Uh, Campbell coming up, and that's going to be more of a bullpen type game for you guys. Yeah, that's right, and uh, thanks for having me, first off, Brian. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate it, and yeah, you know, you look at Tuesday, this past weekend, we threw a lot of guys, and so uh, going into the middle of the week, it's 
how our guys feeling are they healthy uh more than likely we will start carter spivey on the mound and he'll be on a, a strict pitch count and then go from there and probably see a lot of faces tomorrow in, the, in that game against campbell and next weekend for the Carolina series, the plan right now is to go with the same rotation, though that could change. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Coach Godwin and I haven't sat down and talked about right. it just yet. Uh, we're going to evaluate where we're at in the middle of the week and what's going to give us the best chance to, to compete and win games next weekend and, and go from there. All right, the elephant in the room, obviously, is the Carson Wilson hunting situation. And all we know on this end is that Coach Godwin said last night that he would not be available for Campbell or the three Carolina games. It's a very fluid situation. Uh, it's very unfortunate, obviously, for everybody involved. But we all have to just kind of be patient to see how it all works itself out. So for right now, it's the next man up. And that's what you guys are doing as a pitching staff, right? Yeah, that's accurate. And it's exciting for a lot of guys on the pitching staff from the standpoint there's a lot of young guys that you guys got to see this weekend that are very talented. And and they're thrown into some roles where they're going to get experience quick. And, you know, it's exciting for a pitching coach. It's, it, it's going to add depth in the long run and get some guys some valuable time on the mound. And so, uh, yeah, it's like you said, next man up. And uh, we're just going to keep keep going. And we'll also take your questions or comments on our Facebook Live page. If you have anything at all you'd like to ask or, or comment on, please feel free to do that. And I'll keep an eye on that. Let's go through the three games in the series. Bryant knocks off East Carolina in the opener 10-2. Uh, it was one of those just kind of weird games. East Carolina had a a chance to score a run in the first, you know, off after the triple, didn't get that run home, and then it kind of you know, the two run homer by Alex Lane kind of set this tone for for Bryant to pull the upset in game one. Yeah, absolutely. It sure did. I think that was a big momentum swing in the first inning, and then we come out in that second inning and give up a two-run home run. And, you know, it's opening day, and Garrett Saylor's got a lot of adrenaline, and it really wasn't himself for the, the beginning of the game. I thought he, he got into a little bit better of a rhythm as the game went along. But the thing with, with uh, Garrett is that the, the whole preseason and fall, he's, he's been a great sinker ball guy and, you know, very efficient with his pitching. And <laughs> you look back on the – on the film from the beginning of the game there on Friday, he's, he's cutting the ball a little bit. And, you know, I think that just has to do with the adrenaline and being excited and, and, and probably trying to do a little bit too much. But uh, I did think he, he settled in and, and really gave us a chance to, to move on to the latter half of the game and still have an opportunity to win the game. Things get different when the lights come on sometimes, don't they? For everybody. They absolutely do. They yeah. absolutely do. And, uh, you know, we, we try to, you know, we really coach guys on the mental game as much as possible and get them prepared for those moments. But it, it really really takes the experience and getting out there and doing it is it's really important sailor goes four innings gave up four hits four runs struck out five walked to the big blow again alex lane with the two-run home run how did you evaluate garrett overall for his performance i thought he settled in you know i, I thought that again i thought he gave us an opportunity to to stay in the game and without his best stuff and so we had to kind of switch plans and, and work more off of off speed as the game went along and and like i said he, he got into a groove there there for a little bit until that fifth inning came along and and gave up two infield hits there in the, in the fifth before we went to Logish. But, you know, I, I think with Garrett, he's just going to continue to get better. And so the more we can get him out in those situations is good. When you go through a game like that, and you had seven pitchers, I think, used in that game, talk about just the idea of how long this person's going to go. It's all it's all individualized, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's really individualized. And that's, you know, where in the in the fall and the early spring, we, we start building guys into specific roles. And then as the season go, goes along, we start figuring out who who fits what role and how long we feel like they can pitch and when they're most effective. But uh, I think that anyone who's followed us, they know that – when we go to the bullpen, it's usually in short stints, um, and it, we don't like to leave guys in the bullpen. And so that's where you end up seeing a lot of a lot of arms go out there into the game. When you look at the pitchers used in Game One, Ben. Terwill, I can't say Terwilliger. his name. Terwilliger, yeah, yeah it's, it's three <laughs> syllables in there. Terwill, Terwilliger, well, I, I inning and two third, four strikeouts. Uh, he looked good. Absolutely, absolutely, sure did. And he's he's an older guy. He's a grad transfer from Barry. He's you know twenty three years old. So he he handled himself the way that we expected him to handle himself, and just go out there and, and throw a lot of strikes and and make them move the baseball or, or put them away in the opportunities that he gets. But I was I was happy with the way he handled himself in that in that stint and kind of slowed things down. Down for the time being that he was in the game. How do you get a guy like Terrell Williger to, to come to East Carolina? Well, he was he was in the transfer portal, so he was a guy that we we you know when we addressed after the end of the last year, we 
wanted to grab one more arm and so he was in the portal and he was at d2 uh barry college there uh and you know had a great year he's an all-american and and had some you know draft rumors and things like that and he was pitching the summer league and, and we ended up just coach palumbo had someone reach out to him and we reached out to him and he loved the culture and the things that we do in our program and and he fits really nicely into, into that culture he's an awesome kid and um you know we're excited that he's here all right when you look at, at the rest of that game it's it I think it was somewhere in the middle part of the game. He gave up a couple of runs on either wild pitches or pass balls. I was in the alpha and couldn't tell. I didn't mm-hmm. go back and look at him. But on a situation like that, how frustrating is that as a pitching coach when you give up a run like that? Um, frustrating, yes. Uh, you know, that was with Trey Savage, who's a freshman who has really good stuff, and he comes in and his best pitch is his curveball. And so we're, uh, we're, we're ripping curveballs. And, you know, a couple couple balls just kicked away, and, and not due to lack of effort is just one of those things that, you know, we just didn't execute the play the way we needed to. And, um, you know, especially with the freshmen out there, I'd like to, like to see the, the balls blocked. But in, in, in turn, also, I think that it's good for that, that, that freshman arm who's going to be a big piece for us to get out there and be in those moments and and see him really go after it with the uh, the intention that he that he had and yeah yeah he fell but he'll be better for it moving forward. Ten two was the final in game one. I think Coach uh, Godwin said it best afterwards. He said it's a great wake up call because you know they came out and played aggressively and and they were more aggressive at the plate. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, you work with the pitchers, but could you see that in your hitters as well? It didn't look like the the pirate baseball team offensively that we're used to seeing. Yeah, you know I think Coach Godwin addressed it already. They yeah. they, they outcompeted us. Through throughout the weekend and they were tougher and they got two out hits when they needed them and they, they just were a tougher offense and a tougher team overall uh, they made pitches when they needed to and we didn't and you know that's just kind of how the weekend went you know they got the big hit when they needed to get it and um, kudos to them they're, they're going to be a very good team in their conference and I, I expect them to win a lot of games they're they're very well coached and and uh, I think that they're they're, they're very, very solid. Pirates fall in the opener 10-2 so we go to game two and obviously the Pirates really want to bounce back. I think the big bright spot for the weekend was how Jake Kuchmaner pitched. Yeah, he was awesome. He was awesome and uh, really pumped for him with that first outing getting out there and, and really the thing with him is he, he changed speeds and threw a ton of strikes and looked like the Jake Kuchmaner that everybody knows and the loves. The perfect game, Jake Kuchmaner. Yeah, I mean that's that's you know a lot to expect from right. the kid, right? But, you know, I was excited to see him go out there and, and, and execute a lot of pitches and early in the game, you know, the, Bryant was trying to take away his fastball so we a lot of off speed early in the game, and as the game went on, they they were more looking for his change up and, and, and off speed. So he threw a lot more fastballs later in the game. If guys, you know, if you if you're following the game closely like that, but you know, it was it was exciting to see him just go out and execute a game plan and and, and be who he is. And, and he's worked really hard, and he's been like that really throughout the fall and the early spring. And so he's just one of those guys. He's a high achiever, and he, he works his tail off for our program. So he de- he deserves success, and I think that he's he's realizing that. I think on the checklist of things that have to go. Right Right for East Carolina to have the season they want. I think his name was right near the top, that he's got to come back to the way that we all know he can pitch, and he did in game one. Uh, six innings pitch, four hits, one run, no earned runs, and he struck out eight. Yeah, yeah, he was he was great, and he is a huge piece. He's a huge piece from a leadership standpoint. Uh, our guys really look up to him, and so you know, when you watched him on, on Saturday, he was very composed, but he looked competitive. He looked like he was going after it, and that was uh, as exciting as a pitching coach to, to see him do that, just because, you know, I, I, I can live and die with that guy on the mound whenever he's competing in that way. And then when you look at the uh, the rest of the pitching staff for Game 2, you come back to C.J. Mayhew, three innings pitched, and he was the C.J. we thought he would be. Yeah, I thought C.J. was really good. Um, you know, he, wa- he walked the guy in his second inning, the leadoff hitter, and then he gives up that triple. And he was competitive the entire time. He had a ball slip out of his hand that, that threw off the backstop. And that's, yeah. you know, it's one of those things. That's a fluke. It is. Yeah. It is. It's one of those things that CJ Mayhew has been out there so many times and I don't know that he's ever done that. Right. And it just happened in that moment, you know, and that's, that's part of the game. The game is challenging our team right now and, and putting us in situations to see how we handle the adversity and handle, you know, the negative things that happen. And, uh, and, and that's good. I think it's good for us to be tested early in the season and uh, that way we can learn and continue to get better. But I thought CJ was great. He's, you know, he was patting CJ Mayhew, you know, went out and, and, and was competing his tail off and, and mixing speeds at times and, and throwing his fastball to his glove side. And I, I was really excited with the way he threw the ball. So it looked like a pirate victory when Justin Wilcoxon went up to the plate and nailed one to right field. 
there was all kinds of confusion. Let's take it from your angle. What did you see, and and you know, h- how did you dissect the thing? If you didn't see it, uh, an umpire, and we'll go in more depth, depth rather than just a second. But umpire called time right before the pitch. Uh, ball was hit out of the park. Celebration. You know, they get together. Coach Godwin gets ejected. I mean, it was just a a, a crazy scene as far as that goes. What did you see? Um, yeah, and uh, again, that's a play that I don't think any of us have have ever seen. Never. And, and you know, like we were discussing off air i don't think that first base umpire was doing it intentionally by any oh, no. means but uh i actually had a really good view of it i was i was kind of in the media uh media test side of the dugout standing right behind coach goblin and looking where i could see the first base umpire the uh the the hitter and the pitcher and everything and so right before the pitch was made i saw i saw the first base umpire run up and and start waving his hands and it was almost you know synced in with when the pitcher started his total delivery and of course justin hits the ball over the trees and I, as soon as he did that i'm like oh this is not going to be good oh. this is not going to be good um so i i knew at that moment that there was going to be a problem somewhere in there and uh and bryant's guys heard him down there at the end of the dugout heard him calling time and, and the first base the first baseman did a good job and, yeah. and uh you know when it comes down to it he called time and that's the game and that's what was handed to us and uh unfortunately we didn't we didn't move on after after that, after that situation, and, and still go win the baseball game. Max Stokes was the umpire involved. He's from Greenville, longtime friend of mine, and really a good guy. And he does a whole lot of stuff around East Carolina with, with different things. I mean, he helps you guys with scrimmages and that yeah, kind of thing. Sure so, does. I mean, just a really, really good guy. So you know, he feels probably worse than anybody in the world. My only problem with the play, and if Mac were here, I'd, I'd tell him the same thing. I think in that situation, as an umpire, you've got to sell that. As soon as you call time, you've got to you know raise your hands up. Start. Don't even look where the ball goes. You got to be in the back of your mind. I hope it didn't go out. But but you know you got to be because if it'd been a little squibble to first base and it'd been an out, everybody would have been oh time. Yeah. You know, all the pirates would have said hey, you called time. Mm-hmm. So I mean it's one of those things. But I think in that situation with the way it went down, you know if you call time, you've got to have both hands up. You got to start charging and you don't let the runner. You don't let Wilcox and go around the bases at all. Yeah, you know, it, it's dead. You know. Yeah, the, the celebration part it just it extended too long. Right. You know I mean. Our guys are standing on the on the field, and we're having to bring him back into the dugout. And Justin, which I thought Justin handled it really well, um, he almost hit it out the second. Yeah, the second time. He, he ends up putting together a great at bat, yeah. you know. And that's an emotionally charged at bat. I mean, a guy just hits a walk off home yeah. run that's called back, and he still is competitive and tough and handles himself extremely well, um, which he really did the whole weekend. Um, but you know, it's one of those moments that it, it, you wish that. What you said happened yeah. where, hey, if, if we call time, like, let's run on the field and not let Justin run around the right. places and not let the team on the field and not let everything be thrown on, on all over the places and Collins put on heads and, and all that that fun stuff, yeah. you know, just get back to the game. But uh, unfortunately, it went the other way, and that's, you know, that's that's, uh, that's part of it. Yeah, if helmet tossing goes to an Olympic sport, Coach Godwin's got a <laughs> shot. And I don't blame him. I mean, I, I, it was just one of those instinctive things, but it was – it, it, that's just one of those. It's just like a close call out or safe. You know, umpires are taught you got to sell the call, mm-hmm. and now with replay, you really don't have to sell it anymore because they'll go back and replay it. But that is the kind of that's not reviewable, right? I mean, I don't. Think no, it, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's not a reviewable. It's not a reviewable play. play. But you can see on the replay, you know, over and over and over that you know the hands kind of went up, and the first baseman was pointing to the to the yeah. umpire right away, and it was just one of those crazy things. And and that's the thing about sports. Every day you wake up and you go to a sporting event. You may see something you've never seen before. Something brand new. And, and, and that that's, certainly was. That's cert- oh, my goodness, yeah. I, I, we've been around this sport for a long time and never seen that distinct play before. Yeah. So, hey, that's one thing coming out of the, the weekend is, hey, we got to see something that we've never seen before. A walk off a home <laughs> run. That's uh, it's ruled a no pitch for a timeout call. But I uh, feel bad for Mac. He's a great guy, as I said, and just one of those unfortunate things. And uh, I and just wanted to make sure that Justin still had the 1-0 count. I was like, hey, let's make sure that that's not called a strike or anything. Right. It's, that's it's true. 1-0 count. Yeah. So let's see if we can do it again. Yeah. And he almost did. Yeah, he he, he did. sent one to the wall, but the Pirates would uh, fall in that game 4-3 would be that final and, and you know that's one of those weird games that 
because the guys did bounce back and the guys did have a little pep in their step and they fought hard and they had it and thought they had to win at mm-hmm. one point in the game. So you had to be pretty pleased with how they came back then. Yeah, they, they competed well. I really thought they competed well on Saturday uh, all the way around and the ball didn't bounce away at times and uh, and even yesterday still competed better. But we just got to execute better. We got to be a little bit tougher and we got to you know just make it count when it when it matters the most. And that's what this team will do. We will do that moving forward and we'll continue to get better and we'll evaluate the weekend. You know fairly and 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 address the things that we need to address and and we will continue to get better that's the one thing that you know about a cliff godwin baseball team yeah. is that we're gonna we're gonna continue to 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 work hard on the things that um is gonna make us a good baseball team when you look down that line i mean there are some big names that just didn't have very good weekends and you know they're gonna bounce back i mean that's just that's just you know their, their history ch- says that they're gonna bounce back austin knight pitching coach at east carolina is my guest we'll take a commercial break right now we'll come back we'll go through game three from sunday and we'll take a look ahead coming up next on the brian Bailey Show. Hi, this is Jeff Charles, and this is a Pirate Radio Sports Break presented by Ron Ayers Motorsports, Highway 11, north of the airport in Greenville. Joe Dooley's Pirates lost a heartbreaker yesterday in Orlando, 69 to 66, on a buzzer beater three point shot by UCF's Darren Green Jr. Tristan Newton led the Pirates with 19 points. Tremont Robinson-White had 14, Brandon Suggs 13, and Vance Jackson 10. ECU is now 13-13, 4-10 in ninth place in the American. The Pirates will host USF Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Cliff Godwin's Pirates lost to Bryant 4-3 yesterday. The Bulldogs from Smithfield, Rhode Island sweep the series. ECU returns to action tomorrow night for a 5 o'clock game at Campbell in Bowie's Creek. And last night in the NBA All-Star Game, Team LeBron beat Team Durant 163-160. to Steph Curry made 16 threes and scored 50 points. This has been a Pirate Radio Sports Break. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is proud ECU graduate and former baseball player Brandon Manning inviting you to join my team at Farm Bureau Insurance. Right now is a good time to review your coverage with a local trusted agent like me. I will make myself available before or after business hours, and my clients always have my cell phone number if they need anything. From home, auto, or life, give me a call today and let's talk about your insurance coverage and about the Pirates. Call 531-1812 and go Pirates! Have you ever seen those exotic aquariums like the guys do in Las Vegas on television? You ever thought about having one of these aquariums in your business? It's more affordable than you think. This is Hal Pruitt with rentafishtank.com. We can make having an aquarium in your business turnkey with no work, cleaning, or hassles for you. Rentafishtank.com creates a relaxing atmosphere and keeps children occupied. Rentafishtank.com already services many dental, pediatric, and doctor offices, plus hospitals and senior living centers. Check us out at rentafishtank.com. The icy treat that can't be beat is Sparky Snowballs. From big kids to little kids, Sparky Snowballs has been making smiles happen for over 20 years. If you're not in the mood to chill out with a snowball, Sparky's funnel cakes and fried Oreos are a perfect Sparky-licious treat every time. Are you having an event, party, or fundraiser? Call Sparky's to come on site. Remember to follow Sparky's on Facebook or visit SparkySnowballs.com to see where they'll be next. Introducing new Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda, Classic Cola, Cherry Cola, Citrus Soda, and Orange Soda. You hear that? It's seltzer with a pop of soda, all with zero sugar. Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda, the loudest flavors ever. Pick up some new Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda at your favorite retailer today. Bud Light, proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. And the official beer of the ECU Pirates. Hi, this is Parker Bunch. When I'm not hitting dingers or going viral, I'm listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities. Community-owned, community-powered. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back on this Monday. East Carolina set to take on the Camels of Campbell coming up tomorrow night down in uh, Bowie's Creek. So we'll talk about that game coming up in just a bit. Let's go to game three now with Bryant and East Carolina. Bryant wins it by the final of 4-3. Jake Hunter got the start. I thought he pitched well. Yeah, he did. And he's a guy that I I think that Pirate Nation is going to see a lot of and going to end up loving. You know, he's a guy that... um, is very competitive, 
very competitive for a young guy, advanced with his pitching as far as, uh, you know, four pitches in the strike zone at any point and as composed as any freshman I've ever seen, especially going into that situation where, you know, he's told last week on basically Wednesday that he's starting on Sunday, and I don't think he drew it up as he would be taking the, the Sunday game after us losing two games yeah. in a row. And, and But the thing is, he, he, he was unfazed. You know, it's it's a low heartbeat, and it's a guy that is, is going to be, you know, very good because he just had handles himself well on the mound. Yeah. So you could see that. You could see that he really handled himself on the mound and 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 really looked the part, you know, for mm-hmm. for that Sunday start. And I thought he he looked really good. Talk about the rest of the uh the outings on Sunday. Yeah, so you know, we started with Jake and then we went to Ben uh Terwilliger again and uh d- did well, got two quick outs and then we walked the nine hole guy. Um and then uh you end up giving up a, a two out RBI in there when we bring um we ended up bringing it. He, he he gave up one, and we ended up bringing Ryder in yeah. as well, and gave up a, a crooked number there. Um, but after that, you, you talk about Josh Groves. It was good to get him back out there. Uh, he had been dealing with some soreness and, and some tightness, and you know, we told him th- at the beginning of the weekend he was going to get one inning, and I thought he looked good. Um, ball looked like it was really coming out of his hand. He had a scoreless inning. After that, Carter Spivey came in, and uh, I think he struck out the side the next inning, um, and, and was really pleased with him. He's a guy that's been throwing the ball really well in the pre season and, and like I said he will he will start the game against Campbell um, tomorrow so excited to see what he can do and then uh, Nick Logish came in and had a, a good eighth inning and then and then the ninth inning you know and put, played out the way it did gave up the leadoff double bring Skylar Brooks in he gets a strikeout uh, and then bring in a freshman Merritt Beaker who's going to be put in a lot of those situations and, and gets uh, a quick out against the left hander one of their better hitters um, and then of course the, the wild pitch there directly after that uh, scored, scored that go ahead run so as a young pitcher, do they think about, you know, I know they have to keep the ball down in the zone and that kind of thing, but how much of that as a young pitcher do you, or do they not worry about it at all? They just go up and, and just throw their pitch that, and they think, you know, because it was it was a wild pitch, but I mean, it was, obviously, like like CJ, it slipped out of his hand the other day. I mean, yeah, just, yeah, I, I don't think that Merritt was worried about throwing a wild pitch in that situation. Uh, we, we try to train our guys to, to pitch with zero right. fear of those situations. That's what I was asking. That happening. Um, you know, really, he's probably just, you know, so excited to be in that moment. And so he wants to succeed so much. He probably just did a little bit too much and right. choked it off. And, 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 and that's hey, all it takes. It is. It is 100%. And uh, again, I know that it's a negative on the weekend, but it's a situation for that kid as a freshman who's in the you know in the spotlight there at the end of the game. He's going to grow from that and he's going to learn from it. And he will. He'll make the pitch the next time. The next time he's out there, he'll make the pitch. You just watch because you know I have a lot of trust in those guys. And 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 he's 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 going to be a very good pitcher for us. Now you're on the pitching side of things obviously and coach Godwin said a couple of times this weekend he's the hitting coach and and he takes responsibility for some of the struggles there it just seemed like the Pirates just couldn't get that big hit I mean they get a couple of runners on base and they just just for whatever reason it just didn't come and if you think back to last year how many two out runs did East Carolina score last oh, yeah. year it was a ton mm-hmm. and you know that's really what our offense is, is predicated around is that tough at bat and and things like that and obviously this weekend it, it, it wasn't the best it could have been and it will get better. It will get better. There's too many at bats that have been had in that lineup, and Coach Godwin does too good of a job of coaching those guys to be tough and 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 stick to an approach. And they'll get better. They, I think that it, you you look at it and it's a multitude of things. It's, it's it's opening weekend, and the guys are excited, and they're probably pressing a little bit, and and they'll they'll, they'll continue to get better. And those at bats, you know, we'll be able to trust those guys in the middle of the lineup. That you know, it just was a weekend where they were not at their best, and we will learn from it and continue to grow. It was almost like there was a lot of pressing on opening day because it was opening day. Mm -hmm. And then as the series kept going, there was pressing because, hey, we got to win the game. We got to get this thing done. And it didn't happen. What was was the mood like yesterday with with the huddle with Coach Godwin talking to the team and and the team's reaction to what was, you know, the sweep? Really, it was... was, it, it was fine, you know. It, it's obviously we're all disappointed in the way that it went in the weekend, and uh, and we take ownership as coaches in that. Is that we we, we have to just coach better and uh, ultimately execute better when it comes down to it. But um, I think that the the guys are going to bounce back quickly. Um, that's the thing about being eighteen and twenty two years old. You, you're pretty resilient. You, you're not going to hang your head and be down for too long. I think they're excited to get back on the field uh, and, and play tomorrow against Campbell, and uh, we'll just like I said, we'll, we'll learn from it and. 
we'll grow from it and hopefully that our guys know now that hey we're not indestructible we're not invincible we, we have to play well you have to play well to yeah. win baseball games at any level you look around college baseball there's a lot of teams that are very good that lost games this right. weekend um, and it, it's a good wake up call certainly no question definitely a good wake up call um, but at some point in the year we we're going to be tested so why not the first weekend yeah it's one of those series, too, that so many, you know, we talked about the home run that wasn't, but so many odd things that happened. Ryder Giles is an, an unbelievable talent at shortstop. We all know that. Mm -hmm. And he had a play that he makes 99 and a half times out of 100 all the time. And it just, you know, it didn't happen in that play. Threw, threw the ball kind of in the dirt, couldn't get the pick, and cost you there. I mean, those were just odd things that happened. No question. No question. Yeah, yeah it, it is unfortunate. And Ryder Giles will pick our pitching staff up and our team up more times than not. Yep. I mean, like you said, 99 times out of 100. Um, I, I trust that guy with, with anything there at shortstop. He's, he's one of the best in the country and had a tough day. You know, yeah. he had a tough day. And, you know, the thing about baseball, if you play long enough, you're going to have tough days. Yeah. You are. Um, and he will bounce back. No question. He will. But, um, yeah, it, it was it was an interesting weekend. There's no question when it came to some of that stuff. And uh, um, we, we'll, we'll keep getting better. It's kind of like one of those deals you want to just burn the uniforms and start over. And start. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't afford to do that, obviously. But still, you got plenty of baseball left. What, 53 more games? And it starts with Campbell coming up tomorrow night. And then the Carolina series. Two games in Chapel Hill. One in Greenville. Next year, they'll reverse that. And you'll play two in Greenville and one in Chapel Hill. So we're looking forward to that. You've got the Keith LeClaire classic coming up some good teams coming up in there so you don't have time to really sit around and feel sorry for yourself uh, we, we better not if yeah. we're feeling sorry for ourselves we're gonna look up and it's gonna be a lot a lot worse than it is right now but they won't they won't they're resilient kids and they'll get right back to it starting tomorrow and i'm, I'm looking forward to seeing us play good baseball tomorrow austin knight pitching coach at east carolina my guest let's take another commercial break we'll come back and we'll continue on talking pirate baseball after this The Rick House is Eastern North Carolina's premier American-style restaurant and bourbon bar. Join us at the Rick House for mouth-watering steaks and made-from-scratch pastas. Check out the 16-ounce cowboy steak and our seafood delight pasta. The Rick House is open for lunch daily from 11 to 2, Monday through Friday. Take a break from your work day with lunch at the Rick House. Join us for our legendary brunch on Sundays from 10 to 2. The Rick House, American Provisions and Spirits, 710 Red Banks Road, beside the bowling alley in Greenville. This is John Gavigan with the Gavigan Agency. Our top priority is doing what is best for our members. Whether you are buying a new vehicle, a new home, protecting your family with life insurance, or filing a claim, our agency will be there every step of the way. Our goal is to become a trusted advisor for you and your family for all of your personal and commercial insurance needs. Give us a call in Greenville at 756-1400 for a car, home, business, or life insurance quote today. And give us the opportunity to show you the benefits of doing business with someone who cares the best burgers around everyone loves a thick juicy and fresh burger tiebreakers in greenville plus the all-new tiebreakers in winterville do real burgers better than anybody so don't just go to any burger themed restaurant chain it's time to break the chain and eat local tiebreakers real burgers at its best Everybody loves burgers. East Coast Grading and Utilities is your source for clearing, hauling dirt, and concrete work. East Coast Grading and Utilities handles all sewer and water issues as well. I'm David Bone. Whether it's putting in a new subdivision or helping you with any and all of your drainage problems, I can get the job done. Call me at 531-7494. No job is too big or too small. East Coast Grading and Utilities. Friends helping friends. 531-7494. For East Coast Grading and Utilities. Utilities. Seared Chop House is Greenville's only true chop house. We're open for lunch and dinner seven days a week. Seared combines a remarkable menu with an unrivaled atmosphere. Lunch or dinner at Seared is a quality driven experience where we highlight a thoughtful approach to locally sourced ingredients and hearty flavor rich cuisine. We're firing up the grill at Seared, Greenville's only true chop house located on Fire Tower Road at Bell's Fork. Come see us at Seared for lunch or dinner seven days a week. This is Coach Steve Shankweiler, offensive line coach for East Carolina University football. And you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. 
You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities. Community-owned utilities mean local control, low rates, and high reliability. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back. Austin Knight, pitching coach at East Carolina, is our guest as we talk Pirate Baseball. Pirates with Campbell tomorrow night, and then the Carolina Series in Chapel Hill on Friday and Saturday, and then back in Greenville coming up on Sunday. When, when you look at, at a series like that with North Carolina, you know, obviously it's North Carolina, and there's something about the Tar Heels, Pirates, Wolfpack Pirates. I mean, it, it gets everybody, you know, players, coaches. I mean, Cliff played in, a, in these series type things before, so you know about him from what, your old Miss days with, with other rivalries, mm-hmm. don't you? Yeah, I think it's one of those things that, you know, rivalries are always exciting to, to everyone around. Uh, I think the players, they, they see it as an opportunity to compete against people that they grew up playing against just because of the, the connections within the state and, and things like that. That's, you know, like you said, back to my old Miss days when playing Mississippi State or Southern Miss, it's a lot of guys that you probably grew right. up playing with or or uh, are know very well and you get an opportunity it's not like it's not like on the field the, the kids hate each other it's not, it's not like that at all but it is it's an exciting thing for the fan bases and it's exciting competition for sure uh between some some really good programs so how did a mississippi boy like you get to east carolina as pitching coach well cliff goblin yeah. cliff goblin so uh whenever i was at old miss cliff, uh coach was he was my assistant coach he was the hitting coach he was the catching coach i was a catcher so i had him for three years so 2012 to 2014 when we went to Omaha and of course you got to have some good stories in oh of course but you know <laughs> some that you I probably can't yeah, yeah. I, I like my job a lot exactly. so I, I tried to keep most of those to myself <laughs> exactly. no I, I, you know I owe, I owe Coach Godwin the world man I, yeah. I don't think that I would be here I obviously wouldn't be here right. but coaching and, and doing what I'm doing now um, without him you know he's, he's a guy you know I, I, did, I came from a background where my dad's a high school coach and was for 30 years in Mississippi so I probably would be coaching but coach Goblin is really uh the guy that i give a lot of credit to um within that program who who you know made made me into a man per se you know he toughened me up and uh showed that you can also care about somebody and also give them tough love and bring them along and and you know i've said it on on record a lot but i owe owe a lot to that guy you know and we're in an age right now that tough love you know, it's given a bad rap. You know, a lot of people, you know, we can't do this, can't do that. But t- sometimes you need tough love. No question. No question. Yeah. Again, I, I think that um, it's why a lot of people leave our program and are very successful um, because we care about them and we coach them. And there's some criticism that comes with it. It's all constructive and it's not personal, but it's one of those things where you got to grow up a little bit. You know, you got to grow up in our program and you got to handle your business. And it's not just on the field, it's off the field. And um, I think that whenever you're, you're, uh, having people that are mentoring you in all facets of your life, like you're just going to grow a lot more. You're not just a piece of the puzzle. You're not a piece of the puzzle to, to help us win games. Ultimately, yes, we need to win games, but I see it as a lot bigger than that, and that's not the reason that I, I got into coaching. Um, I got into coaching because of the kids and the the impact that coaches had in my life. So, um, Yeah, I, I 100% agree with you. I agree with what you're saying, and I think that our job as coaches is to mentor these men and show them that we love them and get them ready for life what was it like working with coach dietrich for the last couple of years awesome uh yeah. Co- coach Dietz, i mean Dietz is one of my best friends um and he's a guy that was very successful before he even got here and he allowed me the opportunity to to help him to coach with him and uh the thing that, that i took from Dietz is there's no ego he let a hard-headed young guy like me just come in and, and he's probably like this guy this guy probably needs to shut up sometimes um but it, it, he he allowed me the opportunity to, to coach and to help with the pitchers and he didn't have to do that you know he could have he could have been the guy that said hey man i've, I've got it you know right. I've got, I've with got all his experience out. he could have been my way or the highway and no just, question yeah no question but he wasn't like that at all and that's why i consider on one of my one of my best friends um, because of how he handled our relationship and he was he, he's always the guy that you know he, he had his, his his arm around my shoulder and, and helping me and mentoring me and and the guy that we hang out off the field with our, with our families and things like that so I, I'm super he got his first win over at Cal State Fullerton this weekend yeah. nothing over Stanford uh, big win yeah huge win yeah. so I, I was I was just pumped pumped for him and excited for him and and what he's doing in that program I I, I know that they're just going to 
continue to, to get better and, and get back to the Cal State Fullerton of old that was going to Omaha and, and doing those things. Uh, I, I, but the thing that I know about Dees is he's doing it right over there, and he's he's, he's treating those kids right and, and, and building a, a good culture and a good program. And Coach Godwin said when he was looking for a pitching coach, he got a lot of calls from you know coaches, mm-hmm. head coaches, that wanted to make a change in their life and wanted to come and, and be the pitching coach, and, and he stuck with you, and that's got to mean a lot to you. It does. I, I, told you, I told you already I owe a lot to that guy, and it just shows me the, the trust and the loyalty that he has in me. Um, of course, I have it right back to him. You know, there's there's nobody else that I would want to be coaching with in, in the country or no other place that I would rather be. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that I, I, I thought that it might happen whenever the opportunity arose, but there was no there was no questions. No was, guarantees. No guarantees. Yeah. No guarantees. But right. he, call, he called me pretty much as soon as Dietz took that spot and said, hey, th- this is this is yours. I just want you to know that. And so uh, that, that meant a ton to me. Um, and I, you know, I, I don't take it lightly, the opportunity I have to coach these pitchers and, and develop them and get them better. But uh, I, super, super pumped. And, you know, that's, like I said, I owe a lot to Coach Godwin. And you're talking to Coach Palumbo and to Coach Godwin, but they both say that you have a great rapport with, with the whole staff. I mean, the guys. And, and it's really tough, especially as a young coach, mm-hmm. because, you know, you're not that much, you know, older than they are. Right. But, but they have to respect you, which they obviously do. And, and you can't be everybody's buddy all the time. No question. And, and luckily, it's I've been doing this since I, you know, since I got done playing. So 22 years old, I was coaching, um, and I've learned from some really good coaches. You know, I've learned from Mike Bianco at Ole Miss, uh, Chris Curry at Arkansas Little Rock, Lane Burroughs at Louisiana Tech, who who hosted a regional last year, um, and then of course Coach Godwin. And you you have to separate it immediately. You have to separate the the player coach relationship, but you also still have to be able to connect with those guys and have that good relationship where they feel like they can talk to you and explain things to you and that's the only way that you really get the most out of them is if they know that you are you have their best interest and need in, in your mind and you guys can work together to to get to the final product uh it's not not everybody's journey is just a, a straight a straight line to the top there's a lot of peaks and valleys that go with it and so i i believe that as long as there's a lot of trust within the players and the coaches and of course respect with that mutually um that those guys they'll get where they need to go I had asked this question to Dan Roselle. I remember that. Coach did the same thing. But when you go out to the mound on a visit, I always thought it was like a mechanics thing. Like you see something in the dugout and you say your elbow's going out, flying out, or it's, it's, it's coming in. But th- they both kind of said it's it's more or less, you know, just to, to – it's, it's more mental than it is physical. No question. I don't I don't ever talk mechanics when I go out to the mound. You really can't. You can't because, yeah. yeah, then you're you're opening up a big can of worms that you, you don't start know thinking where it's going to go. That. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, we don't really ever talk mechanics. And honestly, sometimes we don't even talk about the game. You know, just, hey, tell a joke or something and get see their mind off. Of yeah, that's yeah. right. Something, something to just relax them and get them back into the moment, get them back into the present moment, and and, and something to keep them thinking positive. Because um, usually in those moments, it's a situation where something stressful is happening. There's guys on base, maybe there's you know no outs or something like that, and you may tell them the situation, but it's it's more about getting their minds back into the positive and present moment, and then learning what they have to do to apply to this situation and uh, and get us out of it and put our best foot forward. So it's not, it, it's never anything mechanical. There's never going to be that whenever I go to the mound. But like I said, a lot of times it's just lighthearted and just, you know, get them back to, to thinking in a positive manner. Do they have coaching clinics that, that have, like, you know, experts on, on you know, mound visits and, and talk about <laughs> stuff like that? I think that would be fascinating. You know, I, I don't think they have anything on mound visits. And I think that everyone's theories are probably a little bit different. You know, I, I definitely don't think there's one way to skin a cat, per se. Right. But, uh, um, you know, I, I, that it would be interesting to hear what other people think about that. That. Um, obviously, we, we have our ways, but I'm sure there's plenty of different ways around around the country. So yeah, I think it's it's, it's fascinating to me because when you, you come out, because usually it's, it's not you know it's not to come out and say hey, you're doing a great job, <laughs> keep, it, keep it up because <laughs> something's going on. And uh, and usually when Cliff comes out, there's a pitching change yep. going to be made. Mm-hmm. Does he come? He comes out sometimes if he's got an idea, doesn't he? Yeah, usually if he's going out to the mound, it, it may be some strategy, it may be a bunt defense yeah. situation where he gets the whole the whole group of the infielders to. Together and can, can can communicate with them. Uh, that way, we're not just screaming out something from the dugout or whatever. Just to be a little bit more thorough with some situations and things like that. But same same with coach. It's never it's not mechanical or anything like that. It's hey, here's what we got. Here's what we're gonna do, and this is gonna get us out of this situation that we're in. So let's let's get back to work. From day one as pitching coach at East Carolina, how have you enjoyed the role? 
Love it. Oh, I absolutely love it. Um, I, I love our group of guys. They're, they're a group that since day one, they have uh, they put the work in, and there's always been great effort behind what they do, and the, the mental state has been awesome, and they're just a good group to be around. They, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's a good environment whenever we go into the pitching indoor each day, and, and uh, we kind of set the plan for the day ahead, and those guys, they go full steam ahead, and they execute what they're asked to execute every day. I've really had no problems with any of them, so... Um, I, I love it, and I love getting to work with those guys on a daily basis. It's just, it, you know, it's very enjoyable for me. So and you got a lot on your plate now. You got a little baby at home, yeah. Little Deacon, absolutely. that's a great name, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Deacon Timothy Knight at home yeah. with with mom right now. Uh, six weeks this six this Thursday. Weeks. So uh, yeah, wow. he's he's he likes to scream in his dad's face a lot. Um, Lefty or righty? Do we know? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Probably a little just, early. Probably tie the right hand behind his back and throw the left hand. <laughs> I mean, my dad was a left handed pitcher, so maybe that's in there somewhere. That but, could uh, be. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. I'm not. I'm not too worried about that right now. He, he doesn't even. He doesn't even really know who I am, much less baseball. So <laughs> he'll learn uh, quickly. Yeah, he's figuring it out. He's figuring it out. But yeah, he he uh, he loves his mom. He uh, likes to scream in his dad's face as much as possible. Um, and then kind of like Coach God. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I, then I get give give him off to mom for a second, and then get get him calm, and then I take him back, and I'm like, yeah, I got this. I got this it. Is good. That's so. good. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll be shocked when the season's over, and he'll come up to. You. He'll probably be hitting dingers by then. I mean, <laughs> Because they grow so fast. Well, we, we can only hope, right? It's really a really a cool deal. Austin Knight joining us. Let's take another commercial break. We'll come back and then we'll wrap things up with Coach Knight and continue on with this Pirate Baseball season. It starts again tomorrow at Campbell. Back with more after this. Safety comes first at Greenville Utilities. Did you know that by itself, natural gas is completely odorless? As a safety precaution, a chemical is added to the gas that gives it a distinctive and unpleasant odor. This allows you to detect the slightest amount of natural gas both indoors and outdoors. If you smell a strong odor of natural gas in or near your home, you should immediately call Greenville Utilities. GUC maintains staff around the clock in order to provide immediate response to emergencies such as natural gas leaks. You can count on GUC to keep safety job number one. The Angus Grill is your premier spot for the best burgers, cheesesteaks, and brisket sandwiches around. Join us for our unmatched variety of burger combinations. From the mushroom bacon Swiss burger to the jalapeno popper burger to the original Angus Classic. Pair that burger with our amazing onion rings, tots, fries, or sweet potato fries. Angus Grill, with four amazing locations in eastern North Carolina, including Winterville near Pitt Community College, on Jarvis Street in uptown Greenville, and on Statensburg Road near the hospital. It's the best burger around, guaranteed. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled-to-perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby! The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola a journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Is that the sound of an ooey, gooey, cheesy, crunchy slice of P-I-Z-Z-A? <laughs> Obviously. But as good as that sounds, we think it can get even better. Oh, yeah. That's the sound of a freshly opened fizz-filled Pepsi. The only thing that can take this flavor medley of crunchy dough, mouth-watering cheese, and savory sauce to the next level. How about another bite? Pepsi and pizza sound like a match made in heaven and taste even better. Pizza. Better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Bring home comfort at huge savings during Bostic Sug Furniture's President's Day Power Event. Now at Bostic Sug, amp up your space that makes a powerful statement with hundreds of power sofas, sectionals, and recliners in stock. Experience the power of better sleep on a Serta Arctic mattress with 48 months special financing with no minimum purchase. And with any Arctic purchase, get two free pillows. Now at Bostic Sug Furniture. While you're sleeping, our whole hogs are slow cooking over wood to create that bite that Eastern North Carolina is known for. I'm Sam Jones, and for more than three generations, my folks have been the torch bearers for what whole hog barbecue is supposed to be. At Sam Jones, you'll find plenty of smoke but no mirrors. Everything, and I mean everything, is made fresh daily, including our sides, sweets, and sauces. Come on over and see us at Sam Jones Barbecue, and I bet you'll be able to taste our passion in just one bite. Sam Jones Barbecue, Fire Tower Road. This is Zach Agnos, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. 
You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, working for our community, not for shareholders. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back as we continue on with Austin Knight, pitching coach at East Carolina. Got about 10 minutes or so to go in the show. Let's talk about just the, the individuals a, a little bit. Maybe get your thoughts on just how they performed this weekend or if we didn't see them yet, you know, what, what they're like. But uh, just go down the list. Let's start with Jay Kuchmaner. Yeah, I, I, again, we'll, we'll go back to Jake. Uh, thought he was awesome this weekend. Uh, really, three pitches for strikes and handled himself really well. And, and like we said earlier, is the, the Jay Kuchmaner of, of old per se. But I think that uh, even his stuff was probably a little bit better than it had been in the past. Um, and he he certainly gave us a chance to win that game. And, and here in the you know in the near future, we, we capped him at his pitch count there at 85 pitches this weekend. But got through six innings and and really pitched uh, very well. He works fast too, and that, that means a lot for your defense. Yeah, it? I love it. I love yeah. it. Uh, it just keeps the game moving and it keeps it more fluid. It and it keeps the defense involved and as the as the coaching and from a coaching perspective it keeps you move I, I like to move fast i like the tempo to be good and so uh I, I like it when he is on the mound no question and that's the worst part and to get off subject a little bit about replays you know i, I just I, I just think it takes away so much from baseball that because you slow down and the umpires have to get together and then they have to chat a little bit, then they have to give the sign they're going to go look yeah. at it, and then it, it just takes away from the flow of the game well it takes a lot of the human element away from right. baseball you know that's the thing that's always been beautiful about baseball is like there's going to be mistakes there's right. going to be and there still is yeah no question there's mm-hmm. going to be mistakes from the umpires there's going to be mistakes all the way around and when, when you when you stop it and have to go watch it, of course you want to get the play the, the play right you want to get the call right no question um but those replays they can last you know f- up to five minutes at times and it's like all right well let's just it's just an awkward time where you're just kind of sitting around and and not much yeah. you know not much to do but not sit much there and wait how about Ryder Giles? How do you feel like he did this weekend? I thought he did good. I yeah. thought he he pitched the, the 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 way that we expect Ryder to pitch, changing speeds uh, from that angle makes it difficult on hitters and go on both sides of the plate. And uh, obviously Friday he, he put up uh, some good numbers. You know, he pitched well on Friday for us and and got us to the back end of that game. And then yesterday came in and faced two hitters and, and gave up one hit, but uh, got us out of the inning there after shortly after that. But uh, you know, vintage Ryder Giles for sure. When you want when you want the ball to be hit on the ground somewhere, is that that the idea? Just bring him in. Yeah, he keeps it so low in the zone. Yeah, and he's also a guy that you can count on to, to fill up the strike zone. And so they're going to have to go earn whatever right. they get, which is a big piece of it. You know, uh, within our program, we don't we don't want to give up the freebies. We want them to, if they're going to score runs, we want them to earn them. So. I'm going straight down the list of earned run averages, and you got a bunch of zeros. But uh, and some of the guys that have earned runs, they really pitched well. So yeah. you really can't tell by stats this time of the year. But uh, how about Josh Gross? Yeah, again, I was excited to see Josh out there yesterday. He's a guy that I think that uh, you're going to look up. He's going to be on the mound a lot for us this spring. Uh, a guy that can run the ball up into the mid 90s. Yesterday it was it was mostly 93, but uh, you know a quick inning that he had, and and he's a guy that uh, I think that as the season progresses, you're going to see him in some pivotal roles. And uh, the the thing with him was just making sure that he was healthy and, and confident to get back out there, and uh, it was a good step forward for him. For sure. Merritt Beaker, the big left hander. Yeah, Merritt's going to like I said, he's going to be awesome for us. He it's kind of a, a deceptive look and a really good slider and uh, came in on Saturday and got a left-hander out and then he came in to face their, their arguably one of their best hitters in the in the woods kid the leadoff hitter and got him out on the first pitch and he's a guy that he's going to continue to we're going to continue to put him out there uh, as a freshman and um, I'm looking forward to, to seeing how he he uh, reacts and and responds to what happened yesterday and and continue to see him grow Carter Spivey yeah, uh, Carter is. Uh, I was excited with how he threw the ball yesterday. Uh, his breaking stuff was very good, and he's going to get the ball on Tuesday. And and he's a guy that's been in our program for a, a long time now. And I uh, I'm ready for him to take the step forward and, and continue to grow and continue to, to build confidence and, and be a, a real piece for us this year. Will he be like on a 35 pitch? Yeah, count? it'll be short. I, well, we'll talk about the you know uh, the pitch count. Uh, obviously, would like to have him available for for next weekend and right. also also Tuesday. But we want to win the game on Tuesday so if he's rolling I'm not going to just you know rip him out of the game or anything like that but uh, uh, yeah we're going to monitor it and see where he's at and see what his effect- effectiveness is but there's a, I think we'll see a lot of faces tomorrow. What about Skylar Brooks? Skylar is a guy that is competitive and has really come on this year you know he's a two-way guy for pretty much his entire career and has battled some injuries but he's a guy that um, you know came in yesterday got a big strikeout and then uh, on Saturday the, the, the ball didn't really roll his way but he, I thought he th- handled himself well on the mound and uh, filled up the strikes only through 18 pitches and 14 of them
couple more strikes. And uh, he's a guy that has developed as much as anybody in the last year as far as just pitching goes. Um, and he's always had a good arm. He's always been a guy that can throw the ball up to you know 93 miles an hour, 94 miles an hour. But he's he's developed a good breaking ball to go along with it. And the, and the changeup is still coming. So excited for him. We'll skip around a little bit, but um, your thoughts again on C.J. Mayhew? Uh, C.J., you know, he's he's our catalyst. He's our guy that we want to give the ball to at the back end of the game whenever whenever uh, you know whenever it's tight or we need a you know some outs. And he's a, he's the most you know one of the most competitive guys that I've ever been around, and is an awesome kid to work with, and uh, really threw the ball. Awesome, excluding you know the one the one pitch that he threw off the backstop uh, on Saturday, and uh, you know I, it I almost it, hit the bull. Didn't I, it, 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 it did, it did, <laughs> it definitely hit the bull. Um, it was so weird. It was. You know, it, you never see that. Yeah, and you don't see it from him. You right. know, and uh, just a, a crazy situation. But I thought he threw the ball very well. It was three three innings and, and five strikeouts and one hit, and you know uh, he's 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 the guy. You know, he's he's been that since he's been here at East Carolina, and he's he's competitive and you just want that guy on the mound. So, And we did some work with CJ last year with some media training, and he's mm-hmm. really come a long way with that. I mean, he's really done a nice job. At Media Day, he did a nice job. Mm-hmm. And, and for some of those guys, you know, it's, you, you think they're all used to having cameras and microphones on, but, but you know, some guys, it's a little intimidating. He's, he's done a nice job lately. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of people very uncomfortable. Yeah. A lot of people like to honestly just stay to themselves. Right. Um, but he, yeah, he, he has. He's, he's grown a ton as far as just, you know, just his personality. And, and those type of things with with the media and um, you know obviously you guys want to talk to him for good reason he's a, he's a heck of a baseball player yeah, so. heck of a competitor heck I of mean, a competitor I love it yeah. fires me up kind of like Alec Burleson he's you, always, you always want Burleson in the game because you know right. he's going to fight you very similar yeah. Yeah, I think that the CJ is definitely that way um, I, I think that he would fight him if we let him but we, we don't <laughs> we don't we don't let him that would be a problem so all right Garrett Saylor is going to get probably get the start uh, mm-hmm. Friday in Chapel Hill talk about him a little bit yeah again uh, I want to see uh, Garrett bounced back from the outing. He's been awesome the entire, really the last eight months. He's been awesome. He's been a sinker baller. He's been very efficient. A guy that can pitch you deep into the game, keep his pitch count low, get, create weak contact. Uh, and I think that we'll see him return to form uh, this Friday. But again, you know, he gave us a chance on Friday to to, to, to win the game um, even without his best stuff. So he's a, he's a guy that, you know, I trust a ton. Yeah, and after the game, he talked about that a little bit and said, you know, he was a little bit out of his element. That He was trying so hard to do so well, and I think those are the kind of things that, that you look back on, and, and they'll they'll pay dividends as you go down, and they may start paying dividends on Friday. No question. I, I told our pitchers this weekend is that every every team's journey is different, and every every race is different for these guys. And Coach Godwin mentioned it's a marathon, not a sprint. But our our journey is not going to look the same as what the 2021 team was, or the 2019 team was, and certainly not the 2020 team with the, yeah. the COVID year. But it's different every single year, and you have to navigate through different things uh, and you have to handle some adversity and you got to handle success which I think is just as important as handling when you're when you're succeeding and not getting overconfident and cocky and not and not going about your business the right way um, but I, I told those guys that every every team's journey is different and it's going to look different for all you guys so you got to just trust the trust the, the the story and trust your process of what you're doing and we'll end up where we need to be based off of that. And Coach Amanda, we talked about a lot. How about Jake Honey? You talked about him a little bit, but he uh, I, he just looked the part of a Sunday starter out there. Yeah, very mature. Throws a ton of strikes, and I think that's, you know, he, he he's obviously given our hitters a ton of fits in the last uh, six, seven, eight months. Um, but he's a guy that he's not going to beat himself. He's going to go out there. He's going to fill up the strike zone uh, with four pitches. He's going to be confident on the mound. He's going to be competitive on the mound. Um, really, you know, really advanced in that, in the mentality standpoint from a friend. Um, and so that's I'm excited for him. Just get him out there and, and let him and let him work and go through it. And um, that's a, an awesome opportunity for you know uh, within our program to have a true freshman starting on, on the weekend. It's, it's great for for his development. If there's one thing that you want to tell your entire staff that we've got to do better at this going forward, what would it be? Uh, two out walks. Yeah. Two out walks. Yeah, I think that was the catalyst uh, yesterday. We walked too many guys with two outs, and you know it's something that we've talked about a lot. And uh, but you know it's something that we, you got to learn and, and grow through, and uh, and then just keep just keep plugging away, keep the process going, stay positive, uh, be positive with everyone around you, uh, and keep working hard. And uh, and we'll, we'll like I said, we'll we'll get where we need to go. And I would say offensively, what Cliff will tell those guys, and I think it was the uh, the slogan last year: toughness over talent. Mm-hmm. I think you know, all those guys. 
have talent. And I think that this weekend he was kind of like, hey, you know, we got to show how tough we can be. Yeah. And that those at bats and that Bryant came to town and they they were more aggressive. They were. They were tougher than yeah. us. There's no question. And that's the pill as a coaching staff, especially at this program, is it, tough to swallow. But when you you look back on the weekend and you evaluate, and they just were tougher. They they made the pitches when they needed to. They got the hits when they needed to. They were aggressive uh, all the way around. And so it, it was one of those things that you, you look back and it's like, well, we need to get back to that. We need to be tougher. We need to be tougher on the field. We need to play our brand of baseball. Nothing that a sweep over the Tar Heels. Oh, correct, <laughs> yeah, well, we got we got Campbell first. So. That's right. <laughs> got Campbell first, and then North Carolina for three. But Austin Knight, pitching coach at East Carolina, joining us for this hour. We certainly appreciate your time and uh, wish you the very best of luck. You're a young coach, but you're kind of like I said this to Cliff early on. You kind of like Cliff was when he was a young assistant coach. You know, growing up, we knew he was going to be great. And he left here and he went through the ranks with you know Ole Miss and Notre Dame, whatever, all the places he went to, Central Florida, and you're kind of the same way, a young coach and ready to go. I'll take that. I'll take that compliment. Yeah. I appreciate that. And obviously, he's been extremely successful, so uh, I, I appreciate you saying that. And um, he'd probably tell you he's better than me, but n- no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, final, uh, qu- final question. What's uh, Deacon's pitch count right now? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what a baseball is yet. <laughs> but he'll find out very soon. <laughs> find out very soon. Austin Knight joining us. That is our show for this Monday. Pirates have Campbell coming up on Tuesday night, then North Carolina Friday, Saturday, and then back home against North Carolina on Sunday at Clark LeClaire Stadium. We'll, of course, see you at the ballpark for that. Uh, I want to thank Austin Knight for joining us today, and we'll see you back here next week on The Brian Bailey Show. This has been The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, and also brought to you by Angus Grill, Bostic Sug Furniture, Bojangles, East Coast Grady, Papa John's, The Gavigan Agency, Pepsi, Seared Chop House, Taft Taft and Hagler, tiebreakers and greenville auto world join us next week for another edition of the brian bailey show right here on pirate radio this is pirate radio